Hi, Terry Solomon here from GoTreasureHunting.com, and today we're going to talk about how to approach a private property owner, or door knocking, as it's called, uh, to get permission to detect a, a house, a farm, a um, commercial piece of property, whatever it may be. Um, let's go into a few things that are extremely important when door knocking. The first being your appearance. You have to look nice, man. You have to go there with your, uh, with nice clothes on, not all dirty. Uh, if you're wearing a hat, take it off before you get to the door. Uh, when the person comes to the door, make sure that you take off your sunglasses, that you make eye contact with them, that um, you smile and extend your hand. In these days with the COVID, maybe you don't want to extend your hand. Maybe you want to put a fist bump out there or even an elbow. But that's the first thing to think about uh, when you're door knocking is your appearance. You want to look nice. You want, you're, you're selling yourself to this homemaker. When you walk up to the door, walk up like you own the place. Be confident. Be, uh, hold your shoulders up. Um, be smiling. Give a wave if you see the homeowner at the door. Um, when you approach them, it's always good to have what I call a hobby card. Now, a hobby card is like a business card for metal detectors. You should have your name, your email, your telephone number, your home address on that card. You should also have on the card amateur archaeologist or um, history expert, something of that nature that lets this person know that you are knowledgeable, um, that you, it, to give you some sort of uh, a key to to get onto that property. For instance, I'm very lucky in that I'm a member of the American Legion, and uh, I was the historian for my post uh, for a while uh, as an officer, and I still have cards left that you know identify me as a member of Post 1038, past historian. And it has my home phone number, it has the post phone number on it, has my email on it. And that's very impressive when you hand it to somebody because they know you're into history. Um, you're not just there to find treasure. I always start with, hi, my name is Terry and I've, uh, you've probably seen me in the neighborhood before. Even if you haven't been in the neighborhood before, this gives you one more point with that homeowner landowner um you've probably seen me in the neighborhood before i'm really interested in the local history here and i believe that there could be some real nice artifacts on your property and of course anything i find i will show to you and and offer to you um as you know it's yours i mean i I get my kick out of coming out here and finding these things so they don't rot in the ground. Remember, you must do this as an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch, what that means is you've got 30 seconds to make your case. So you need to have an approach that's going to work for you. My approach may not work for you. Um, Again, sometimes I, I smile and I, I say, hey, you know, how are you doing? I'm not trying to, first of all, I just want you to understand I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, I, you know, I'm here to talk to you about your property and, and, you know, get to know what you know about this area. You want to um, assure the landowner that you're, a, uh, you're an amateur historian, that um, you want to present them with some facts about their area that they may not know, historical facts, um, you know, treasure legends, anything like that that they may not know, to impress them that you know a little bit about where you're coming from and where, what their land is about. Now, 
if they're smiling and they're going along with you, this is all good. But sometimes you're going to run into, you know, problems. Uh, the one thing that I hear a lot, are you going to leave holes in my yard? And this is where you take your time to explain that you use a uh, sod cutter, a specialty tool that takes a plug, brings it out of the ground, you retrieve your target, you put that plug back in the ground, nobody will ever know you were there. You can invite the landowner to come out and watch you dig a plug. This is very helpful. I find that that is very helpful. And um, throw a joke in there, you know. Uh, say, hey, if I do find buried treasure, you can have it, you know, whatever. You might also want to try the approach of saying, I'm part of a metal detecting club, and we videotape our hunts. Um, I wanted to know if we could videotape a hunt here on your property. Of course, you, you know, you get... Um, first refusal on anything we find you know we're really interested in the in the uh, uh, old coins we're interested in the the history of this area so you know we'd like you to be in the video if you'd like to be in the video you know use a pitch put a pitch together and use it for that landowner now your pitch is not always going to work but if you have a good pitch it's going to work at least 50% of the time and sometimes 60% of the time. You are gonna be disappointed. There are people that are gonna tell you to get off their property. There's no doubt about it. But you have to develop a bit of a hide, a thick skin, always be professional, always be polite, and always leave them with a smile and a business card because sometimes they change their minds. This is Terry from GoTreasureHunting.com and I hope you have taken something from this that will spark an interest in finding that first private property. Good luck to you and hey, get in on our Nocta Macro giveaway. We are giving away a Simplex Plus, a Pulse Dive, we're giving away coils, hats, digging tools we're giving a lot away as soon as we hit 7,000 subscribers and folks we're at over 6,800 now get in there help us out subscribe and smash that like button thank you so much